Hello, YouTubers. Welcome to Johnny's YouTube NetSec channel. Today, I'm going to talk about the checkpoint IPS breed. This is checkpoint page regarding IPS. So we're going to tell you what is IPS, why we should use IPS. To make it simple, from my opinion, IPS technology is the most effective way to provide multi-layer defense and protecting your internal network at the parameter level. It will dramatically reduce your internal network's vulnerabilities to be exploited by hackers. So let's start to work on. Here is my diagram. We can see we have checkpoint firewall, we have internal machine, and we also have management server, smart console, and our router, internet. It is the same topology I use for other blades. First thing, we need to enable our IPS blade on our gateway. So checkpoint DR firewall is the one I'm using today for this lab. Double click on it, you will get the checkpoint gateway properties page. I already enabled some network security braids, but for a threat protection braid, I haven't enabled anything. So today we're gonna enable IPS just by simply click on it. You can enable it. So there are two options according to the threat prevention policy or detection only. This is a lab, so I'm gonna choose according to the threat protection policy. But if you are working on your production environment, you may want to start with detection only. And then you will go to this according to the threat prevention policy after you finish your testing. Simple, click IPS, choose the protection, click OK. The braid is enabled. You also can verify the IPS settings from the properties. You can see there's an activation mode, two modes. We are using according to threat prevention policy mode. For other changes, you can keep it the same. The second step we need to do is enable a policy. By default, you may already have the settings there. First time the policy is going to be loaded, it may take a while. Okay, we have two policy rules. One rule is for our MTA traffic. It's automatic rule for MTA traffic when you enable that option in the gateway properties. The second rule is default rule as well. Basically, it's allowed any protected internal network to be using action as optimized action. There's a couple of other profile you can use, basic and strict. We will clone one and make some changes for our testing. And then we will assign that profile to here later. And then you will be installed on a policy target. So we don't need to change this policy. By default, basically, everything will be protected by IPS rule. If you go down to select tools, and then you will see profiles here. As I said before, there are three profiles, basic, optimized, and strict. Right now, by default, they're using optimized. But in this lab, I'm going to use strict for testing purpose. I'm going to make a clone, strict policy. I will say this is test strict policy as clone. We create our test strict clone profile. We're going to apply it into our policy. So we're going to change that, change the second rule to using test strict clone profile. And then we're going to install policy, push, publish, and install. That's basically what you need to do to enable 
IPS protection. It's very simple and easy on checkpoint firewall to The policy has been completed around 99% and now it's succeeded installed. Next step is going to testing our IPS policy. There's multiple ways you can do this testing. You can use in Metasploit to explore your vulnerabilities and also you can use some vulnerability scanning tools to scan your internal network, cross the firewall of course. And uh, here I'm going to show you the easiest way to test your IPS policy. If you go to IPS protections, you will see all protection signatures. For FTP, for DHDNS, for DHCP, all of them. There's a thousand protection signature available and it's predefined. And the you will need to keep updating this once you have subscription from Checkpoint. Today I'm going to show you a way to test this using the pin command. So when you search the pin signature, you will find a tool of them. The first one is max pin size. So basically the pin is sending around 40 bytes packet, 32 bytes data and the 8 bytes header in Windows. But for Linux, the pin gonna send in around 64 bytes uh, packets to the destination. The IPS core protection profile is for this signature, they only used on optimized profile. They are not used into any profile. So for us, we have to change it to test strict. That's the key step. If you don't do that, this signature will not work for your profile, which we created based on strict profile. That's the first step. You can put the exception. And here is the behavior. The default action is accept. We're going to change it to job. So if your pin size is too high, too big, which we can define here, right now is 2500. We if we sending any pin size, as I said, pin size is very small, like 64 bytes or maybe 40 bytes based on your OAP operating system. But we can simply, simply sending an, a packet higher than 2500 pin size packet, then it should be dropped. Let's try that. Right now, if we try with high higher pin side packet, it will not drop because we are not enforce that policy. So our IP is 192.168.2.71. We're gonna pin, we're gonna pin our internal server 192.168.2.242 with package side, I'm going to put 6,000 and we're going to repeat it for five, 10 times. It's working because we didn't enforce that policy on our strict profile. So right now we changed it. We enforce this policy rule to test strict profile. Now we need to install policy. OK. 
okay policy has been installed succeeded now we can try with normal pin it's working we're gonna try with bigger size 6000 package size interesting it's not working as we expected that IPS blocked this packet let's verify that you can go to logs and the monitors and we can refresh at 446 right now it's 447 so 446 we send out a packet and it has been detected by IPS braid and you can see the attack information echo request too big there's a CV numbers relating to this attack and the protection type is protocol anomaly it's preventing maximum pin size originally from 192.168.2.71 against 192.168.2.242 attack name is larger pin so here's the result we tested successfully our IPS is working it's protecting our internal networks we can tell how easy we can use the checkpoint firewall to activate IPS to protect your internal network and reduce the chance to expose your internal network's vulnerability to the public. Thank you for watching.